What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. We'll be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about The Nun 2. Uh, sharing a little theory about The Nun 3 as well. And I'll be ending this by just briefly discussing A Quiet Place Day 1. Now, just to start it off here with more comments from Kevin Gruder, who we know is returning to direct Saw X. More comments from him in the latest edition of the SFX magazine that came out recently. And... Several, I'll have these several new images that came out recently as well from IGN coming across the screen as I go over these comments from Kevin. But upon reading the Saw X script, members of the production crew who were not previously part of the Saw family kept saying they didn't realize the series was this emotional. And I'm like, well, normally it's not. It really is a good story. And Tobin's character John is more empathetic it sounds crazy because he does some pretty horrendous things but that's the magic of Saw that we can have a protagonist that's that out there Tobin Saw X performance is an extension of everything he's done before he had a really big role in the script development and even brought a lot of that into the film after it was shot adding some additional ADR lines that were really helpful to us Saw X will also explore the question of how did Amanda go from this person who would do anything for John, who would jump off a cliff for him to turning against him as much as he does in three. That's dramatically the material we were working with. So these comments, of course, again, more things to get you excited. Hearing about how people reacted to the screenplay in this capacity because it's doing things that many people don't associate with the Saw franchise. Again, growing up as someone who would always watch those sequels every year and they would drop, the consensus around Saw was this just torture porn. And even as someone who had watched those sequels, I wasn't someone who was rather quick to revisit them. And I can honestly say I've probably seen each sequel minus Spiral and the one prior to that jig. So I probably seen each sequel maybe two, not two, but like five or six times at best. Uh, there is that the consensus around it just being torture porn. Now, the original one, I've seen that a handful of times. I've seen that, seen that about as much as I've seen Scream or some of these other horror classics. So it's nice to know that we are going to see a side of Saw that we know could have always been present consistently throughout it. Instead, I think they sacrificed a lot of that for, yes, relying on selling the movie for what's the twist going to be this time. And I get it. It's been very effective for them, but it's going to be a nice surprise and change of scenery to see this emotional edge to a Saw film that has been missing, you could argue, since that original movie. Now, diving into Scream 7, Kevin Williamson seems very hopeful about Nev Campbell returning to Scream. During the Happy Horror Time podcast, he had this to say about Nev's absence in Six. I totally respect her opinion. I know exactly where she's coming from. I know her well. I love and adore her, and that's what she did. It's right for her. I love everyone involved in Scream, and all I can say is pay her the money. That's what I would do. I would give her the money. I'm sure there's a, num a number they can agree on that will make them both happy, so hopefully one day they will figure that all out. Now, I will say this. Some people need to keep in mind. Those of us who are on the outside looking in, we have nothing to do with the pay. And a lot of people involved with these productions have nothing to do with the pay. It is not up to Kevin Williamson if Sidney Prescott or if Neff Campbell can get paid or not. He can only do so much. Sure, he can advocate for her. I have no knowledge of if he advocated for her. I have no doubt that he probably did, though. And even if he didn't, that's that's really not any of our business outside of the fact that we're just fans. <laughs> I, I will just say that for anyone that wants to come down on Kevin. Nev has already been more cryptic about her involvement this time. And since Kevin is involved with Seven and she was negotiating prior to the strikes, I'm hearing Kevin's words and going, he obviously knows more than he can say. That's my thought process right now. Plus, major outlets are running it as he wants her to return, and that's not what he said. But enough is aligning right now for me to believe Nev will return in some capacity in Scream 7. And that they have started to figure it out, as Kevin put it, that they should figure it out. I think they have started to figure it out, and I think Kevin knows that they have. 
beyond just paying her we again need a quality storyline for miss prescott give her something to do make it worthwhile don't just have her here for the sake of hey you know we needed nostalgia bait and you know we're not gonna really give you anything to do we're just gonna ellen bursting you into this film but diving into the nun 2 the nun 2 mid credit scenes what was it if you don't want to know click away come back in, my, in like a minute or two but I want to discuss this and speculate on what happens in The Nun 3 possibly. So many of you might have noticed that I lied in a tweet I put out last week or sometime earlier this week because I caught on to IMDb and other sites and some of you even sent something to me putting listings up of certain cast members that shouldn't have been there. Uh, and I want to try, try to preserve the surprise as much as I could for people who just follow me, see my tweets, see my post on YouTube. I wanted to try to preserve that surprise for you. But yes, Ed and Lorraine Warren are in this movie as a mid credit scene. I had found out about this in July or June, but the scene shows the Warren mailbox. Ed answers the phone, and I think he's like, how can we help, Father? So what I'm assuming is happening here is Maurice must have married Sophie's mom, but Valak, of course, is still inside of him. And the Nun 3 will show us a full feature film of the Warren's encounter with Maurice and how they got Valak removed from him once and for all. Simply, simple theory, not too complicated. And the reason I'm assuming Sophie's mom is his wife is because Maurice was said to have had a wife in the very first Conjuring film. And this sequel does a much better job, again, like I said, at convincing me that Frenchie is Maurice because it started laying the groundwork for at least one of those bits that Ed mentioned about Maurice in his description of him in the original film we're starting to see groundwork being done for a wife to appear at some point in another sequel with maurice we don't have anything though on this molestation that apparently went on with, Mar with maurice from his father in the first nun he's actually talking very proudly about his father more so than negatively then again i don't know when the molestation occurred but that's neither here nor there since I ended my video prematurely, I'll just inject it here. But the next thing I want to touch on actually is going to be The Strangers, the trilogy coming from Lionsgate, because we actually have had a rescheduling of this panel that was supposed to happen this past summer. It's now going to happen this fall. According to Comic-Con, uh, New York Comic-Con, that being, there'll be an exclusive first look at The Strangers trilogy taking place on October 12th at New York Comic-Con. The description here reads director Rennie Harlan and producer Courtney Solomon will discuss The Strangers and will provide an exclusive first look from their new horror trilogy releasing from Lionsgate in 2024. Now, we know Madeline Pesch will be starring as the protagonist, the main protagonist, I can only assume, of this trilogy. I'm assuming she's going to be in every movie not to say that she won't die but if she's going to die probably won't happen until that last movie hell honestly she could die in the first movie now that i'm thinking about is as, as open-minded as i like to be she could die in the first movie and just appear in all of the subsequent sequels because it's movie magic you can do anything but they're going to give us our first look this fall this october at new york comic-con Someone apparently will be in attendance with them. I can only assume it will be Madeline Pesh. That's who I can only assume it will be. It could be someone else. Maybe it's someone who is associated with the previous entries that they're going to have brought in to confirm that they're going to also be in the movie as a way to show us that this is still within the same universe because we know it is in the same universe, according to one of the cast members. But it's been described as this remake and this reboot. It's more so a reboot. If anything, if it's still set in the same universe. And I'm curious if, yes, they will give us some type of cult angle where they'll loop in that the people from the first two movies are associated with these new people because there's a cult of these type of pe individuals that go around and maybe they have some type of connection off screen that we don't get to see their interactions, of course. And maybe that's how they'll weave it all together. But you'll get your first look at the Strangers trilogy this October. I want to share that with you guys. Now we'll jump into the last topic here. <laughs> jumping into a quiet place a quiet place day one had a test screening last night the first one ever and it seems to have went rather well for the most part i can say that the biggest issue i can see myself having with this movie might be the pacing if they don't trim things although i'm sure a lot of this is going to be trimmed down lupita niago and joseph quinn apparently do a wonderful job in their roles and the ending could be one of the most moving finales of the three films so far, depending on how it's executed on screen. I'm going to do a separate video to talk about this more, but Joseph Quinn seemed to be praised by most people in attendance at this screening. They did have some gripes 
with the character but overall the consensus was that he did a phenomenal job so for all of my stranger things fans out there this might be another major performance on his resume the mystique of these creatures seems to also not be squandered but we learn more about them in a small degree i'd say and there's a nice callback to the original film involving a waterfall so I will have a separate video up talking about that. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.